WeBoost has released their new Destination RV Cellular Booster Kit specifically for stationary RVers. Hi there, I'm Shri with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and today WeBoost is rolling out their Destination RV Cellular Booster Kit, and it is specifically for stationary RVers. Now first, this is just a replacement kit for their RV Connect 65 cellular booster kit that they released a couple years ago. And these booster kits, they come with a directional antenna and a higher gain interior amplifier, and they are designed for fixed locations. So first of all, mobile cellular boosters, which is what a lot of RVers will use to get a better cellular signal, are designed to always be in use. They have an omnidirectional antenna on the top of the roof that is able to see cellular towers from all angles around the RV, and they broadcast a smaller signal area inside the RV to reduce oscillation between the exterior and interior antenna. Those types of boosters are ideal for most RVers who are going to be changing locations frequently. This cellular booster line are designed actually on residential boosters. So the gain on them is at the full 65 decibel gain, which means that the booster is transmitting a stronger signal outside of the interior antenna, giving you more boosted range inside of your RV or home, which means oscillation is more of a possibility with the exterior antenna. So these boosters are only certified for use in a fixed stationary location. They're not something you're going to use while you are in motion in your RV or vehicle, and you're going to have to set it up at each location and get it properly aimed to wherever the tower is off in the distance, which is a bit of a chore. So this sort of booster solution is really not meant for mobility. Yes, you can move it, you can pack it down, store it away, and then set it up at your next location, but there is a setup process involved, and aiming that antenna can be a bit of a chore in trying to select which direction that antenna should be aimed at to get your best performance. So keep that in mind. If you are going to be a mobile RVer, going with one of WeBoost mobile cellular boosters is going to be a better option for you, such as the WeBoost Reach Drive Reach Kit. This new kit, the Destination RV, is based on the multi-room home kit that they sell for residential use. So it's an amplifier, just like you're used to in booster kits, and it has an exterior antenna that is directional, um, and it has to be aimed. And this kit also comes with a panel antenna that you use inside your RV, and it'll transmit a stronger signal and cover more of your RV space to give you enhanced cellular signal inside. And any cellular device that you have that's inside your RV, and inside that range of wherever that panel antenna is able to reach, is able to get an enhanced cellular signal. So more bars. We'll get to that in just a moment, what that means for data performance. Now, what makes this kit unique from their home kit is that it also comes with a telescoping pole that can attach to the outside of your RV so that you can extend the antenna up and reach to a further away cellular tower. So that pole is actually a really cool feature and it's a really good quality pole that we have tested before. And it also comes with a thin cable to connect the cable coming from the antenna to the cable going to the amplifier itself, this thin little connector cable in between is designed to go underneath a window because this is going to be a temporary installation. It's not something you're going to install once and forget it. You're going to have to route that cable every single time or have some way to attach to it to the exterior antenna that you set up at every single location. I can't emphasize this enough. This booster kit requires some fiddling and setup at every single location. This is not ideal if you move locations very often. Now, this is just a replacement kit for the RV65. The booster itself has a little bit more uplink capacity, so you'll get a little bit stronger upload performance with this booster to be able to reach a tower a little bit further away. It is not as much uplink capacity as the mobile drive reach uh, cellular booster has, so that one's going to be a better option if upload performance is important to you. 
and the exterior antenna, the directional antenna. It's very similar to the original one that came with the RV65 kit. It just has a, some slight variations in the gain performance across different frequency bands, but for all intents and purposes, it's almost the same. Now, another unique feature of this booster and what makes it a little bit of an upgraded booster is it does incorporate the band 25 coverage, which is one of Sprint's bands that will become T-Mobiles eventually down the road when they can pick up that coverage. Now, do cellular boosters even make sense in your arsenal? Now that's the bigger question is for phone calls, yes, boosters can do a great performance. Boosters are also great for devices that don't have antenna ports, so cell phones and tablets. The only way you're going to get an enhanced signal to a cell phone or a tablet or even jetpack devices without antenna ports is to use a cellular booster or stand outside on your picnic table and hold your device up in the air. Those are the only ways because if you can't directly connect an antenna to the device, a cellular booster is the only way to get an enhanced signal to them. Now, if you do have devices that have antenna ports like mobile hotspots, jetpacks and MiFi's and air cards, those sorts of things, or a cellular embedded router, Hepwave, CradlePoint, MoFi, Instant Connect. Using a directly connected external antenna is always, well, is most cases going to be a better option for data performance due to a technology called MIMO or MIMO, whichever way you prefer to pronounce it. That means multiple in, multiple out. And we have a video going over the differences between MIMO and boosters. So go watch that if this is a new concept to you. We also have a full guide to cellular boosters if you need to learn more about them and if they will play a role in your mobile internet setup. We find the use cases for having a cellular booster include if you are optimizing on cell phones and tablets without antenna ports, if upload capacity is important to you because boosters can in enhance the upload performance of your devices better than a MIMO antenna can and you're far from the tower. And when you are in situations where you are very far from a cellular tower, then a booster might outperform a directly connected antenna. Also, boosters are now coming with little symbols on them that are saying that they are 5G compatible. So we get a lot of questions on what just that means. 5G compatible just means that for the frequency bands that boosters cover, which there's only a handful of them, Though you will, and if 5G is being transmitted over those frequency bands, you will continue to get some boosted performance over 5G. 5G, however, is going to be spread across many more frequency bands than cellular boosters cover. And the new frequency bands that 5G is going to be deployed on will not be covered by cellular boosters. So don't get wrapped up on this 5G compatibility thing. Boosters still will have a limited, even more limited amount of advantage in a 5G world than they do in an LTE world, which is already limited because there are more LTE bands out there than cellular boosters cover. Again, go dive into our cellular boosters guide to learn more about these things. It kind of gets a little geeky with trying to understand this stuff, but it, the takeaways on this one, this kit is for stationary RVers who are in remote locations. We have done performance testing with the RV65 against mobile cellular boosters in the past. Our members can dive in to our old RV65 testing data and our review of that if you want to see what some of the real world use cases are. Uh, we do not feel that this new booster is enough of a change to be worthy of us going back into extensive testing on it. So we are not requesting a review unit on the new destination RV. Uh, if you have the RV65, unless you need band 25 support specifically in your area, there is no reason to upgrade what you have. Um, and if you are now shopping for a new booster and you have settled in on one of these stationary style boosters, well, this is the one to go look at. It is priced at $649 for the entire kit. It is a big kit because of that extending pole. So it's going to come in a huge box that comes to you and you will need to be able to store that extending pole and directional antenna somewhere in your RV when you do move locations. Uh, WeBoost does offer our viewers a 5% discount. It is an affiliate link, one of the rare ones that we do accept. Uh, so if you use that 5% discount, we do, we'll get a little bit of uh, payback on that. We do thank you for that, but you also save a little bit of money as well. Um, and follow up with any extra information that you need on cellular boosters in our full guide. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. 
They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.